Watch it guys, today we're taking a look at possibly the best budget mini office PC you can buy. Now this is the B-Link Mini S. It's the Intel Celeron N5095. This is everything you're going to get inside the kit when you buy it. You're going to get your user manual. This has color pictures and English text. As you can see here, easy to set up if you've never uh, purchased a mini PC before. So inside the kit, you're going to get yourself a back plate here. This is to mount the uh, PC on a monitor or a wall. We've got some screws here for the hard drive. Uh, that you can put inside here a couple of hdmi cables one small one and one meter long one and we also have a uk plug with an adapter and the barrel connector on the end of it here for powering the actual mini pc itself and then we have the mini pc itself here just take a look at some of the full specs here so you can see now the cpu which i've mentioned already has four cores four threads four meg cache up to 2.9 gigahertz and also we have the GPU, which is an Intel UHD graphics on here. Now this is the eight gigabyte RAM version with also 256 gigabytes of storage. We also have a version of 128 gigabyte of storage if you want to get that one, which is a bit cheaper. Now, again, this can also be upgraded to 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can put up to two terabytes of SSD storage in here and it does support Wi-Fi 5. Now this unit comes in at around about £149, which is very, very cheap for a mini PC. On the front, we have that clear CMOS button, the two USB 3.0 ports, and also that mic and headphone jack on there, and the power button on the front. So on this little unit here, you can expect good cooling because we have some ventilation on the side here, and I'll show you some of the temperatures a little bit later on, and we have some more ventilation on this side. Now, moving on to the back of the device, we have two more USB 3.0 ports, a one gigabit Ethernet LAN port, and two 4K display ports here for HDMI, and a power supply input there. And we have our Kinston lock on the top right hand side. Along the very top there, we have our exhaust fan, which is where all the heat is drawn out the back. Now, the unit itself is obviously had some cutbacks because of the price point, but all in all, it is a pretty good little mini PC if you're just getting into the market for a mini PC and you don't want to spend a lot of money. Around about £150, which is, I'm not sure what that is in uh, US. Top bit's made of plastic here and the bottom. I'll take this all off so you can see inside the actual unit itself so you can see what the parts are like inside. Now this little mini PC will run Photoshop. It'll do all your office applications. It will also be able to do 4K playback. You can have dual monitor set up on this one as well. And you can play retro games on here as well with some emulation, which I'll show you a little bit later on. I'll do some thorough testing a little bit later on in the video. But let me just pull this off with this little rubber clip here. It's in there pretty tight. I'm just going to pull this off so you can see inside the actual unit itself. You just need to pull this very carefully because there is a ribbon attached here, which is going to allow you to put that SSD in there as well. So if you wanted to put another SSD in here, you can put up to, like I said, two terabytes. And that's going to give you plenty of storage to store all your media. So whether you're looking for uh, something to do design work on or home theater, school work, college work, or maybe office or education or any sort of audio making or something like that, you can use this little mini PC for that sort of stuff. Now inside here, we do have our memory in here and also our drive here. So I'll go through here. You can see this is a crucial uh, RAM in here which is running at 3200 megahertz and also 1.2 volts CL22. And we have that drive there, which is 256 gigabytes. I can't see the name on that drive. But again, you do have an 128 gigabyte model and also a 256 gigabyte model. So not the best sort of drives in these. But again, this is at a budget level and you're still getting that good quality RAM in here. So that will really turn me off of buying this little device. And those drives can be updated at a later date if you want to. Now, again, £149 for a mini PC, that is pretty cheap. And again, they've not skimped on quality parts here. Now, I'm not expecting super fast NVMe speeds here, but what you're getting is pretty adequate for what you're paying for. So let's take a look at the full speeds here. Now, the reads and writes, the top ones here is 832.26 for reads, and the writes is 839.01 which isn't too bad. And you can see there we have the 4K there down the third one down, 321 and also 248 uh, for rights for the 4K. Now let's do a quick Geekbench 6 uh, benchmark here. I'm not going to do too many benchmarks on this because it is a pretty low end system. But I'm going to run a CPU benchmark so you get an overall figure 
and you can get an idea of what the benchmarks are like. You can see here single core 903 and also multi core is 2459, which isn't too uh, bad for a budget system. It's not breaking any records, but it is a pretty decent little system uh, for the money. You've got Windows 11 Pro on this as well. Uh, and again, it does come with four cores and four threads, which is going to be plenty for a lot of people who are not interested in super hardcore gaming that just want to use something for like YouTube, streaming some movies or playing some movies back and uh, doing some light work on it. It's going to be plenty for that. And again, at that sort of price point, that is pretty decent, uh, you know, for, for a mini PC. Now, let's have a look at some of the other specs here. I'm going to go through and show you some temperatures as well, but I just want to quickly run the uh, full-on uh, computer benchmark here. So let me go ahead and run this so you get an idea of what the uh, computer benchmark is for the GPU. That's 2,690 OpenCL uh, score. And again, it's not going to be breaking any records, but it's plenty powerful for a lot of people for what they want to do. It will play a lot of retro games as well. Let's have a look at the temperatures, and I'm going to put this under load because this is quite important for a lot of people to make sure the thermals are pretty good. So I'm going to run a benchmark here. I've already been running some benchmarks here, and you can see it's around about 60 Celsius. It does drop down to around about 50 odd. Now, one thing I will say about B-Link Mini PCs is that their thermals are pretty good. They do a pretty good job at cooling down uh, the CPU and the GPU inside their mini PCs. And uh, they're probably one of the best at doing it. And they're probably one of the best in the market for mini PCs right now. So let me go ahead and quickly run this benchmark here. Now, a lot of mini PCs start to really get up into like 90 and 100 Celsius. But you can see here with this one, it's around about 70 at the moment, 70 Celsius. And I'm expecting it to go a bit higher. There we go, 72, 71. And it's holding at that area right there. And that's really good for a mini PC because it means when you put this under extreme loads and you're never, ever going to put this mini PC under this amount of load. So it's going to be pretty good at keeping your little system cool. And I'm not going to keep running this for like 10, 15 minutes because that's pointless. But you can see here, we've got 73, 74. It's sort of getting around there and it's fluctuating a little bit. 76, I can see, and it went back down to 74 and now 71. So the cooling is working perfectly fine. So it really is a good little unit for keeping your system cool. And that's a good thing because a lot of mini PCs don't have a lot of airflow inside them. And when they get super hot, it's going to shorten the life of your mini PC. Whereas this one, because it's running pretty cool here, uh, you know, you're going to end up with a pretty cool, nice mini PC that doesn't overheat. Now you can play 4K movies on here. It will play them no problem at all. And it shouldn't be taxing the system nowhere near as much as what we was just doing there. And you can see here playing no problems at all. And again, you can play all your favorite movies on this little mini PC. You can also stream 4K movies here as well. And I'll show you that in a second. We'll go over to YouTube and I'll quickly stream a movie for you so you can see how that looks. But before I do that, let me just quickly do jellyfish here because some of these jellyfish ones are pretty hard to run on some mini PCs. So here we have the uh, 120 Mbps 4K, and this is also 10 bit. Now, this is the lowest version of the file, and you can see it plays it no problem at all. And I'll even try to skip the video here so you can see that it doesn't even miss a beat. It just literally instantly starts to play that file, and that's really good. So let me go and do this more extreme one here 400 Mbps, and this is another 10 bit file, and this is the maximum file here. And again, it's not having any problems. Even when I skip here, it's silky smooth and the playback is really good. And this means it's good for your 4K movie playbacks if you want to do that. So let's go ahead and stream some uh, content here. I'm going to stream Big Buck Bunny. And this is uh, 60 FPS 4K. And I'm streaming this on an actual 4K uh, TV as well. So I'm going to see some drop frames here, which is expected. And uh, let me just run this here and make this a bit bigger so you can see what the content is like. So it's not actually jerky or anything like that. It is actually playing this. And this is on a 120 hertz 4K TV, and it's having no problems here. And uh, you can see there is some drop frames happening there. But once it stabilizes, it's OK. Now, if you want to drop this down to 1080p, let me just quickly drop this down here to 20, 1080p, 60 FPS. And you can see here, even so, 
that is still working perfectly fine for your movies. So pretty nice. And uh, let me do some retro gaming here. So this is Colin McRae. These are PSP games. And again, these are at four times upscale. And uh, again, pretty nice, smooth gameplay here. Uh, another 60 FPS here, another PSP game. And again, pretty smooth, no problems at all, as you can see. And this is what you can expect from this sort of mini PC. Now, it can play some other PC games and games from the Windows Store. Again, just be mindful that it's not an out and out gaming system, but it can do certain games like we're doing here, no problem at all. So if you're looking for something that has a pretty good all round um, setup where you can do some 4K movies, you can do a bit of light gaming on here and maybe some office work and stuff like that. Or maybe you want to use it for some design work. It will do Photoshop as well. And you can do all that sort of stuff with this mini PC. And at that sort of price point, I think this is probably one of the best uh, mini PCs on the market. And I don't normally use the best in a lot of my titles because obviously some channels will use the best for everything. And this is because they want to try to get people to buy it. And at the end of the day, I only use it for certain things which I think are pretty good. And at this price point, I do think that this mini PC is possibly one of the best on the market. Now, I will say that B Link did send me this for review. It's not a sponsored video, and uh, all my views are my own. No one is viewing this video before it's released, just so you know that full transparency here. Now, again, I think if you're looking for a mini PC and you're on a tight budget and you don't want to spend a lot of money, then something like this is going to be pretty decent for you. But just don't expect it to do AAA listed games at really high frame rates because it's not going to happen. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.